Hi guys, Olive here. Here today to talk to you about the literary scene in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and my experience with it over the past almost 10 years. I do talk a lot about my city here on this channel, so you may have already heard me mention this, but just in case you haven't, or in case you're new around here, in which case, hi, welcome. I live in Pittsburgh. I have for almost 10 years now. I'm not a native of the city. I did not grow up here, but I have lived here longer than I've lived anywhere else as an adult anyway. My husband and I moved out here before we even became husband and wife. We got married here. We settled down here. And I love living here very, very much. When we moved here to Pittsburgh, I was fresh out of college. I graduated a few weeks before we moved out here, if I'm remembering correctly. I had just gotten out of school. I was getting ready to do more schooling. That was the main reason why we chose to move here. And so I wasn't really reading for pleasure at that time. I was mainly reading for school. Pleasure reading was not a part of my life in the way that it had been in my earlier life. Books in general were not a part of my life at that point the way that they are now. I wasn't reading for pleasure and I definitely wasn't reviewing at that point. So when we were deciding where we were gonna move, where we were gonna move in together and start our lives together, the fact that Pittsburgh had a literary scene was not even on my radar. It was not a factor in why we chose to move here. I just had no idea that Pittsburgh even had a literary scene. But really, I don't know that most people would guess that Pittsburgh of all places would have a thriving literary community. I mean, we're kind of a random Western Pennsylvanian Rust Belt city hidden away from everybody. I mean, we're sort of in the mid-Atlantic, but we're on the very corner of it. We're actually closer to Ohio than anywhere else. We're definitely not New York City. We're not in the Bay Area. We're not even Philadelphia, which we may share a state with Philadelphia, but Philadelphia is on the other end of the state. That's a four to five hour drive, depending on traffic and how fast you plan on driving. We may as well be on another planet. We really do have the most fantastic book community here in Pittsburgh, and I'm very excited to tell you all about it in this video. But quickly before I do, I did just want to ask the burning question, why? Why does Pittsburgh, of all cities, of all small U.S. cities, have this kind of a community? Well, I think there are a number of factors that went into it, but I have a theory that it all comes down to the legacy of one very important figure in Pittsburgh's history, a man by the name of Andrew Carnegie. You may have heard of Andrew Carnegie before. Even if you haven't, you have likely seen something that bears his name. His name decorates a lot here in Pittsburgh and outside of this city as well. He was a titan of industry during his day. He ran the Carnegie Steel Company that later became U.S. Steel. Pittsburgh was a steel town, a steel city, if you will. We were big in steel production, and Andrew Carnegie had a lot to do with that. However, when it came to business, Andrew Carnegie was not the greatest of guys. He was known as being ruthless. He was horrible to his workers on a number of different occasions. One of the deadliest worker strikes in this nation's history happened just south of Pittsburgh in a town called Homestead, which has since been paved over and is now a shopping area called the Waterfront. Fun Pittsburgh facts for you. But even though he doesn't have the greatest reputation in that regard, he does have a positive legacy here in this city. And it all comes down to how much he had to do with the funding of libraries, especially here in Pittsburgh, which was his hometown where he ran his business. He had a lot of affection for this area. He provided massive amounts of money for our library system and really libraries all over the country. And that's the main reason why I say that Andrew Carnegie had a part to play in the fact that Pittsburgh is now a literary hotspot. If you'd like to hear more about Pittsburgh's history and the link between Andrew Carnegie and the literary scene in Pittsburgh today, I actually wrote a companion piece for this video for the book review newsletter book post. I will link that for you down below if you'd like to give it a read. It is a very quick read. But the modern Pittsburgh library system is so much bigger and so much more robust than you would ever think of for a smaller Rust Belt city like Pittsburgh. We have a number of different libraries. We keep them well-funded. We're very protective of them. We're very proud of them. I mean, our downtown Pittsburgh library branch, which by the way, if you've ever been to downtown Pittsburgh, you'll know this. It's like a little spit of land 
you blink and you're out of downtown Pittsburgh. It is a tiny downtown area. So there's not a lot of real estate just because there's not much of it. And yet the downtown library branch, which was already super nice, I might add, I used to use it all the time. They closed down for an entire year so that they could undergo a multi-million dollar expansion. And now that library is 68% bigger than it used to be. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that we don't joke around when it comes to our libraries here in this city. We love them, we see their value, and we invest in them. And I guess that's a good place for me to interject and talk about my own experience with Literary Pittsburgh, because I don't make a secret of this fact, but I wasn't the biggest fan of this city when we first moved here. I was definitely going through some things in my personal life that colored my perception. I wasn't in a great place health-wise at that time. But also there are some things about this city, including the weather, that take newcomers a little while to warm up to, if you will. I just needed some time, I think. And also, I remember that things started to change for me. I started to feel like I could possibly belong here when there was a library card in my hands. And that wasn't just because I now had access to a whole bunch of books and resources, and that made me really happy. It was because Books opened my eyes to everything that Pittsburgh had to offer. When books re-entered my life as a big part of my life once again, I got to see all the bookish things that were happening in this city that I had been blind to before then. There were all of these library book sales that I was all of a sudden aware of. And going to the sales, it didn't just help me build this collection that you see behind me, but I also learned my way around this city by going to different library book sales and used bookstores. There were actually quite a few used bookstores beginning to open up or change hands around the time that I moved here. It was a really hot time for bookish Pittsburgh at the time I moved here, it just so happened. For example, I know that Amazing Books and Records opened in our Squirrel Hill neighborhood in 2013. There was also a downtown location, which I know was the first location. It was bought by a man named Eric Ackland, who I happen to know. He actually got a profile in 2019 in the New York Times after there were a bunch of reporters in town covering Tree of Life. And I was so thrilled to see that piece, that profile of him in the store, because Eric is a wonderful person. The store is incredible. And it was so nice to see some positive news coverage of Squirrel Hill after the tragedy, because it's one of the most wonderful, vibrant communities that we have in this city. It was just devastating what happened there. And so it was so nice to see people talk about how wonderful Squirrel Hill is because it really is. The Squirrel Hill location of Amazing Books opened up on Murray Avenue and it lived there from 2013 up until very recently because Eric recently just moved to a bigger, better space up on Forbes Avenue, which is still in Squirrel Hill. But I'm so thrilled for him. He and I had spoken about the fact that he wanted a bigger space. I know he had been wanting one for a really long time. And I'm so happy he found one. It's just perfect. I recently went there and I can tell you that it is beautiful, especially in comparison to the old space, which was very special. I spent a lot of time there as a customer and I also was briefly helping out Eric last spring, put some booked packages together when the pandemic situation was going on. So I'll always have affection for that space, but this new space is beautiful. There's so much more room. Browsing is definitely more comfortable now. Also in Squirrel Hill, also on Forbes Avenue. I mean, it's just across the street from Amazing Books, across the street and down the block a little bit, is the new location of Riverstone Books. Their main location is in the North Hills, but they just took over the space that used to belong to Classic Lines Bookstore. And I was just in their new location. It is gorgeous in there as well. I've always loved that space. I did an author interview there many years ago, and Riverstone has really spiffed it up. It is so comfy and cozy. Then there are City Books up on the north side, which is this adorable used bookstore that's been around for a really long time. I think I saw it's been open since 1984. And I have so much affection for this store, not just because it's wonderful to shop there and it's owned by wonderful people who really make sure that the store is a pillar of the community, 
But also because I have a personal memory there, I attended a signing on a small business Saturday back in 2017, I think it was. And I ended up meeting two people who went on to become really good friends of mine and my husband's. So I will always have a tremendous amount of love for this store. But those three bookstores are far from all of them. I mean, we have so many bookstores here in Pittsburgh. It would probably be impossible for me to talk about all of them and feature all of them in this video because I'm trying to make this video a respectable length. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. I could talk about Pittsburgh, our book scene, and these bookstores all day long if you let me. So I'm trying to control myself here. But once again, I will direct your attention to the piece I wrote for a book post linked below, because in that piece, I talk about one bookstore that I didn't show in this video, but it's the bookstore I would consider to be Pittsburgh's premier independent bookstore. They've done such amazing things, especially since the pandemic got started. They were always impressive, but the dedication they've shown to surviving and thriving in this climate is just exemplary. And also they had a lot to do with the success of a very big award-winning book that you have absolutely heard talked about here on BookTube. So if you would like to hear more about that bookstore and read the piece in general, again, it's linked below. But if you can believe it, our literary scene in Pittsburgh extends even beyond the reach of our bookstores. We go even further than just having a huge number of amazing bookstores. We also have a number of literary organizations Pittsburgh Arts and Lectures is the biggest one. They hold mainly big name author speaking events, like big events in auditoriums. At least we did before the pandemic. They've transitioned to virtual, which is good news for anyone who lives out of town and would like to buy tickets to one. There are always amazing events. Before the pandemic, I saw Helen McDonald speak, which was incredible. Incredible. She is such an amazing speaker. I got to meet her. She signed my copy of Ages for Hawk. It was definitely one of my favorite literary things to ever happen to me in this city. I also have seen Lauren Groff talk. My husband and I went to see Adam Savage of Mythbusters talk, which was also kind of a life-changing event for me. Since the pandemic, I've gotten to see Lily King give a talk which is also wonderful. She is definitely one of my favorite authors. So even though Pittsburgh is not New York City, even though it's not Chicago, it's not San Francisco, we do have our fair share of book events here through bookstores or through Pittsburgh Arts and Lectures. I mean, we get like big, big names coming here through Pittsburgh Arts and Lectures. It's really easy to keep track of all of those Pittsburgh events as well as virtual events because there is a website that focuses on literary Pittsburgh called Litzburg. On that website, they report on all of the bookish news happening here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That might help you understand just how much bookish news there is normally happening here in Pittsburgh. There's a whole website dedicated to it. But most importantly, on that website, they keep a very comprehensive, up-to-date calendar of all the bookish events happening in Pittsburgh, and now all the bookish events happening virtually. So it's a great resource for you, regardless of where you live. I was lucky enough to meet the owners, the runners of that website. They held this awesome happy hour for bookish Pittsburghers a few years back, and I got to meet them there. They're wonderful people. They are active in the book world in different ways, so they definitely know what they're talking about. We also have some larger scale events in the works. I know there's going to be a book festival here in 2022. I'm so excited for that. There was actually also supposed to be a young adult book festival held here in spring of 2020 that got canceled because of the pandemic, which was extra heartbreaking for me because I was going to teach a book reviewing course there. Basically what I'm trying to get at is that there's so much in this city for appreciators of the arts, but more specifically for people who love books and literature. It seems like everywhere you turn, there's a new opportunity to become more engaged in the book world, to discover new books, to meet people who are also interested in books. We have this vibrant community and it seems to be getting better every subsequent year. I absolutely love living in this city. There are a number of reasons why I feel that way. The weather is not one of them though, but I'll say that the fact that Pittsburgh very much to me, it seems, is the literary powerhouse of the Rust Belt. That's a major reason why I love it here as much as I do. There's so much for me here. It's hard to imagine as I think back 
on the time when my husband and I were deciding where we were going to move, it's hard for me to imagine moving anywhere else because I think my life would have gone in a completely different direction. I do think the fact that books came back into my life at the time that we moved here changed everything for me. I mean, the reason why I think I'm sitting here in front of you having this channel is because books are such a big part of this city. They became a big part of my life because they were a big part of this city. Do I think I would be a reader if I hadn't moved to Pittsburgh? Sure. But do I think I'd be in the place I am now? Do I think I would be a professional freelance reviewer? It's hard to say but I think it's unlikely. So while Pittsburgh probably isn't and may never be anyone's first thought when the topic of literary cities comes up, we definitely punch above our weight when it comes to the passion and seriousness of our literary community. This is an amazing place to live, and it's not just because we have affordable housing prices and a gorgeous skyline, although those are definitely perks, but this city has so much to offer. The city of Pittsburgh was once on top of the world. It was once a booming center of the steel industry. And then the steel industry went away and the city wasn't left with a whole lot. It was not in a great place in the 1980s. But over the course of just one generation, just my generation, the city has picked itself back up and it's now better than ever. So we love a good story. We're very serious about literature here in this city. It just so happens that we have a great story too. So that's all I had for you in today's video. If you would like to learn more about Literary Pittsburgh, if you'd like to hear me talk about some things I did not have time to mention in today's video, please be sure to click the link down below to go read the companion piece for this video that I wrote for Book Post. And also in that description box below, I will include links to everything I mentioned in today's video if you want to go check them out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.